You know, when we're talking about education, uh, we tend to think about what the teachers teach, how they teach, what they say, how they say. But you're telling us also it's important how the building looks, how it's built, how it's, uh, how it's put together. Yeah, it's very important. The building is very important because the building actually sends a very strong message about what we believe education is. And the buildings traditionally have said that education is something that happens when a group of students sit and listen to a teacher transfer information to them. But information is no longer available only from a teacher. It's available, as, as Professor Richard Elmore says, it has escaped the boundaries of the school building. So the model, the traditional model where children are treated like parts in a factory doesn't work anymore because they don't need to come to school for information. So the building needs to look different to reflect today's teaching and learning needs. So as a result, what can you tell us the first tips in the building and uh, uh, designing the new schools? Well, primarily the difference between the new model of designing schools and the old is that the new schools are designed for student-centered learning, which means students are actively engaged in, in doing things that they're interested in, that they're passionate about, and they're learning by doing. So the, the material, the, the information is collateral to the act of doing something. We are not even talking about classrooms because we are just talking about spaces that enhance particular activities. So there may be areas that are good for individual learning. There may be areas which are good for small group learning. There may be areas that are good for lecture. And there may be areas that are good for hands-on learning like the Maker Lab. And there might be areas for outdoor learning as well. So what we are saying is that depending on the kind of learning, the space is designed to suit that particular type of learning. The basic fundamental model of schooling that Israel is following now was designed in the United States and in the UK somewhere between 1875 and 1925. So the education model and the school building in particular is at least 100 years out of date. We're still stuck in a 19th century model where learning occurs in single classrooms in very highly structured schools. Uh, I think where we're meeting at Gogia here is, is, a, is designed to communicate what the future of learning might look like. It's a more open structure. It's a structure that's amenable to many, many different types of learning. And it's also open to the outside world. So it's highly technology friendly so that people don't feel constrained by the organization or the structure to use outside sources to inform their practice. And this could also teach us how uh, regular schools could uh, look, not only schools where teachers learn? We invest massive resources every year in replacing obsolete structures. What we need to do is to redirect that money away from replacing obsolete structures and into designing and building new structures that accommodate different kinds of learning. The place we are in right now is was designed for teachers and our philosophy was that how do you expect teachers to teach differently if we don't teach them differently? So the area in which teachers, the way in which teachers learn has to mirror in the way in which they expect students to learn. So they have to be much more interactive and take more control of their own learning rather than sit and wait for someone to lecture to them.